My time here at Tech has influenced me to get out and seek leadership opportunities. When I first moved here, I thought I was going to put my back against the wall and just kind of glide by in college. And then I was lucky enough to meet people who pushed me and now I'm the kind of person who instead of just watching life slide by, I definitely dive head first into opportunities and that has gotten me much further than I would have ever anticipated that I was gonna get in college. Some challenges that I've had to overcome in my personal life prior to coming to Tech would be when I was about 17, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So that was a big challenge to face, wondering how that was going to affect my time in college. But um, after seeking treatment and going to therapy and finding what works for me, I feel like I've really taken the reins on that diagnosis and used it to my benefit. And it has made me a better advocate for people around me and more understanding of what people are going through. My home life definitely influenced me from a young age because I did not know my real dad for a really long time. And then my mom and my dad that raised me got divorced when I was 12. So a lot of things in my older life, I was able to trace back to kind of the chaos of growing up in a small town and things at home happening like that. So it definitely made me want to work with kids who maybe come from a town like where I came from where the resources aren't there for them and they might not feel like people are there for them. Um, it made me want to do that. I want to be the person in a kid's life or an adult's life that's come to realize, you know, these things stem from childhood trauma. I want to be that person there to say, you're valid, you're right, and you can get through this. I think overall I chose to major in psychology and minor in criminal justice and human ecology because I think it really wrapped up my interests in advocacy, being like a defense for kids, um, and coming to their aid and knowing sort of the ins and outs from every angle how we can help them through what they're going through or what they have been through. And that's also relating to uh, my time with the Women's Center and my time with Project Awaken through Peer Empowerment Program. Um, that has given me an opportunity to look through not only a victim's lens, but an advocate's lens. So I'm able to see um, as a survivor to relate to what people have gone through and to be there for them in an empathetic way and then on the flip side to know what we can do about it. So I've had the training and been given the tools to step up and say, well, like, this is what's happening and this is what we need to do about it and this is what we can do for you as a survivor, as a victim. I think one of the biggest misconceptions that come from kids stepping up and wanting to talk about what they've been through and their trauma is that they're just kids and maybe it's not as bad as they're making it out to be. Um, and I think another big misconception that I hear a lot working with kids and doing child advocacy is that kids are resilient, which is not inherently a myth. It is true, they're very resilient, but we shouldn't chalk up um, their experiences to something that they'll just get over. So I think a child needs someone in their life to validate what they've been through and what they are going through and to recognize that it might be years later that things pop up that have you know, come from what they went through as a kid or are still going through. So I think it's important to have someone in their lives that can recognize that and to slow them down sometimes because I think I needed that as a young person, as a preteen and a teenager, someone to just say, stop for just a second and think about like what's happening right now, why it might be happening. So I, I think kids need that in their lives. I think the next step for me is I'm starting my internship at the UCHRA. Um, I'll be doing child advocacy, which is essentially what I want to do with my life, period. Um, I'm still at the Women's Center. I'm still working with Project Awaken. So I think all these things are coming together to make me into the kind of person I want to be for a career in advocacy. So the next step for me overall, I think, is stepping out into the real world, getting a big girl job, doing what I've been doing in college, which is what I love, yeah. If I could change one thing in the world, I think I would have everyone open their eyes a little bit more to the people around them. And I think we forget that people have experiences outside of our own. So just because you haven't been through a struggle doesn't mean that someone else isn't facing it. And they might feel differently about that struggle than you do. So I think maybe when you're walking around during the day, whether it's on campus or at work or at home, just try to remember to be kind and empathetic or to, and considerate to other people. I feel like I'm the best person I can be today given what I was handed. So I feel like until now I haven't given myself enough credit for taking everything I've been through and making that into a valuable experience instead of something bad that happened to me. So I think all things considered, I'm doing just fine. <laughs>